ED's remand case has been taken up first in court. That's the big update that we get here as Manish Sisodia is present inside the Rouse Avenue court. ED pushing for his 10-day custody as part of a PMLA case. He's been arrested under the PMLA Act and they are now being heard in court. Anisha, tell us about the irony of this case and its developments. Today was the same day that Manish Sisodia's bail plea was due to be heard. Even before he gets bail, ED reaches Tihar jail and arrests him in under the PMLA Act. A whole different case, again, on, on the same, uh, bouncing off the same uh, liquor excise policy that was framed. So, on one hand, you have the CBI probing uh, other, the intent of drafting the entire policy and implementing it with intention of receiving kickbacks and commission. And here you have the ED probing into the angle of money laundering. A lot of that bribe that may have come in, Manish Sisodia has managed to uh, move that money out and launder it. That's precisely what the ED is looking into. So today was supposed to be the bail hearing of Manish Sisodia, but it appears that he now has to argue against ED's custody itself. Well, yes, Nabila. Today was the day that the Amadi Party had pinned its hopes that the CBI hearing or the bail hearing will happen in the CBI case because remember, all the other accused have been granted bail in the CBI case. But with the PMLA allegations and the arrest now kicking in, remember, the PMLA Act itself has very, very strict conditions under which uh, if the ED is arresting someone, if the ED is raising allegations against someone, it is very difficult to escape arrest or even get bail. Now, going back to what is happening inside the courtroom, my colleagues, uh, Kanu and Srishti, are telling us that the ED council is alleging, and this is part of the remand application of the ED, that the, there was a conspiracy to frame the liquor policy in such a way as to benefit certain specific individuals, that the public opinion that is required to be taken with regard to any change in policy was not accepted, that the expert committee opinion <coughs> where... There, it was said that uh, uh, there should be no private wholesaler, but government uh, uh, entities should uh, look at, uh, should be selling liquor. That was also not uh, accepted. The profit margins suggested by the committee were also deviated from, and this was done specifically. specifically and this is a straight allegation by the Enforcement Directorate that all of these changes in policy, all of these twists outside of procedure were done to benefit certain entities from the South Group and to ensure that wholesale business is given to certain private entities. They've also said that if they have uh, the letter from the excise department, which is a very, very crucial piece of evidence, Navila, and uh, that there is a specific letter that was being seized from the excise department where <coughs> the 12% profit margin issue has been discussed. What they are saying is that there was no suggestion from the expert committee or from the public consultation to increase this profit margin. And the dilution of the clauses in the policy, the dilution of of the law was done only to benefit a few private entities. The uh, definitions in the policy were changed deliberately. That is what the ED is now presenting before the court. And that is where, remember, Nabila, this entire allegation of money trail will come from because both the CBI and the ED have been investigating the re uh, how this entire policy was changed. And with the ED now going into this history of change in the policy, the dilution of the policy, and raising direct allegations of cartelization being allowed by this change in policy, this, uh, the ED, and I'm reading this out again, my colleagues Kanu and Srishti are sending us these updates from inside the courtroom, that the ED has said that there, this uh, policy dilution specifically led to cartelization and creating loopholes in the policy to allow for such cartelization. So a direct line now, remember we've seen the kind of political uh, <coughs> uproar outside with the BRS leaders also on the dharna in Delhi uh, regarding allegations against K. Kavita, but it seems that the ED now is trying to create a direct trail between what the Ahmadni Party government has done in Delhi and the South cartels of liquor where the BRS leader K. Kavita is also likely to face interrogation by uh, agencies uh, later in this particular week and that is where the entire, the ED seems to be laying out the entire framework, the entire net 
that they are currently investigating. What they are saying is that there, they have evidence given not just by the excise, pol excise department documentation, but also, and this is an update just coming in from my colleagues inside, the secretary of the then deputy secretary of the excise department has revealed that the definitions regarding uh, the related parties, sister concerns, etc., were changed in the report that was given by the group of ministers, the GOM, which is the senior ministers of the Amarni Party, which had <coughs> discussed this matter. Because remember, the Amarni Party's uh, argument so far has been that all processes were followed, that this was a legitimate policy change meant to benefit the people of Delhi and meant to ensure that more revenue comes to the government of Delhi. On the, however, the ED seems to be indicating that the process that was followed, the policy change process that was followed and according to them was just an eyewash, that public consultation, the GOM meeting, the, ex, uh, the expert committee reports, <coughs> I beg your pardon, all of those were diluted, all of them were diverted and then the policy was created, specifically loopholes were created to ensure that cartelization could happen. Now the court, uh, and we are getting another update from our colleagues inside, uh, what Srishri is informing us is that the court, the judge, ju uh, CBI Special Judge M.K. Nagpal is also asking questions of the ED to explain exactly where their investigation has gone, what kind of evidence that they have received. And the judge has said that according to you, was the 12% profit margin suggestion part of the GOM's recommendations or part of the original report uh, of uh, the uh, GOM? Where exactly has this allegation come from? That is what the judge is asking the ED to explain. And what the ED is saying that the uh, that and this is a very very serious allegation, Nabila here, that this recommendation of the 12% was handed over to the GOM by the arrested accused, that is Manish Sisodia, and it was inserted in the policy document. So direct allegation now being raised against Manish Sisodia by. <coughs> excuse me, by the counsel of the enforcement directorate who is saying that the entire, the change in the policy that this massive profit margin of 12% that was allowed for a private entity which is selling liquor in Delhi, that was handed over to the group of ministers by Manish Sisodia and it was simply inserted in the policy document that it was done unilaterally without any discussion and it was not even recorded in the minutes and these are very serious allegations Nabila, which are being raised inside the courtroom by the enforcement directorate council they are saying that uh, there was a unsigned undiscussed decision unilaterally taken by mr manish sisodia and then this <coughs> draft that was prepared by the GOM on the uh, instructions of Mr. S uh, Mr. Sodia was given for the preparation of the final policy and this is a very very serious allegation that is now coming in and is being read out before the court that not only was the policy the process violated but right. in addition the ED is raising a straight allegation on Manish Sodia that he is the person who instructed unilateral change in the profit margins to, uh, to benefit the South Cartels.